Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. This is Adobe Live, and I am your host, Chris Blackstock. It is 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we are ready to do a drawing painting stream with the wonderful Anna Persbrake from Sweden, correct? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, happy I'm to super have you excited. here. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so real quick, uh, we just want a few little things. Uh, we don't want you to miss our Adobe Express streams. It's right before this stream. Uh, tune in and learn how to implement the easy to use app in your workflow with Andrew Hockrattle. Really fun. Andrew's a great instructor, teacher, artist. So please don't miss that. Also shout out to chat. We got our moderator, Wade. Love you, Wade. Love having you on here. We always seem to be working together. Um, if you guys have any questions for Anna, you just want to shout out where you're from, anything, please join us in the chat. And today, we're doing two artist spotlights. We're going to do an artist spotlight today and tomorrow. So very exciting. Artist spotlight today, about an hour and a half into the stream. Um, if you go ahead and look on the chat in the top right side, there's the artist spotlight tab. You can click on that, fill out the form. You can nominate yourself or somebody else you know to be do the spotlight today on the on the Adobe live stream. So please check that out. It's gonna be really exciting. Um, also, if you're on YouTube, hey, what's up? Welcome. Uh, so glad to have everybody on there. And if you're on with us on Behance, you can go to b.net slash Adobe Live and join us on the live stream here. Uh, join us with the chat with Wade and everybody else. Um, and that being said. Hello, Anna. How's it going? Hi. Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing really good. Um, so I believe we're going to be doing a boxing still life today. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, Very cool. So, um, yeah, can you just real quick, could you just uh, kind of tell us about yourself as an artist and show us some of your work before we get into that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so my name is Anna uh, and I'm a Swedish illustrator based in Borlänge. Um, I studied design at the Academy of Art and Design in Gothenburg. Um, I also studied illustration at RISD. Uh, and before I started freelancing, I worked as a design assistant for a Swedish fashion company called Kappal, uh, where I did mostly prints and patterns for kids fashion. Uh, and I also been an intern at Borås uh, which is a wallpaper company in Sweden. Oh, very so, cool. and actually before I went to, uh, into design and illustration i worked as a social worker whoa yeah. well-rounded <laughs> fun facts <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so um like i would describe uh, my work as uh, colorful and playful dreamy and soft meaning i don't have a lot of sharp shapes mm -hmm. uh, and i also think that diversity is very important so um i work mostly in photoshop but i wanted to explore After Effects more because I wanted to get better at animation. Yeah. So for example, um, this one, actually this one is a, is a dream I had. <laughs> um, I dreamt about a burger with flowers in it. It's super strange, but it's the truth. <laughs> it um, <good>. Yeah, <laughs> it was very delicious. Um, yeah. But I wanted to, you know, uh, learn how to make objects move in like different directions. Uh, so this is like this, um, circles are doing so that's what's my, like the main reason i did this one uh, and i love burgers as well <laughs> yeah um and then like this one so this is uh, a gift for clients of the closer and closer agency which i'm represented by oh, uh, cool. so it's a desktop and phone background representing my city borlänge and borlänge doesn't have the best reputation in sweden so i I wanted to like show it from a different side, um, mm -hmm. like show what we are good at, like music, uh, football. Uh, you have like the science center, shopping, like a big lake where you can have like these racer boats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. So I, I really liked and enjoyed doing this one. And I also have done like, yeah, and this one is like one of my favorites. Uh, it's for an ice cream company uh, called Hemglas. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a, like the blue um, truck so here. Cool. Uh, it's like it's filled with ice cream and they go out to different residential areas in Sweden mm -hmm. and sell their ice cream. And like when I grew up, we had this, 
we all always bought like ice cream from this truck so this was like very very fun to do for me yeah it's like we, we have yeah. we have something similar here yeah in America you do with ice cream trucks yeah that awesome. in fact i live in la so We've always got ice cream trucks driving by and yeah. playing, you playing have those songs like, to get your attention. Yeah, those little jingles. <laughs> yeah, 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 mm -hmm. that's awesome. very similar. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so this was really fun to do, and the animation in here is actually made in Photoshop. So this isn't the After Effects. Oh, really cool! Actually, yeah. I recently just did a, a stream with animating in Photoshop. It's it's actually pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm impressed with how much you can do with it. Yeah, this is really cool. And it adds I, so much to your illustrations. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really so awesome. fun to see it. Like, it comes alive, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have... So this one uh, with the football. Uh, this is like the theme for today, I think. Because mm -hmm. uh, I was inspired, because I heard like the uh, sports industry is doing pretty well. Uh, right. So I figured why not do any, like, something with that one. So I figured I should do like three still lives of different sports. So this one is the football one. And today I will do the boxing uh, illustration. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for it. I think everybody's Perfect. really already excited about all of your work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Bi awesome. Biola says that uh, she wishes that her art would come to her in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you bad. do. Yeah. yeah. Maybe tonight. You never know. <laughs> Uh, Clever Devlin says, Sweden tops my favorite places I've ever been to. Wonderful wow. place, lovely people. Awesome. So, I'm so glad to hear that. Like, where in Sweden did you work? Like, where did you uh, visit? Oh, Clever, we're asking. So, yeah, wondering where in Sweden you visited. So, uh, awesome. they'll let us know when we, I'll let Perfect. you know when uh, they drop yeah. in. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, I think I have like um, a video uh, on my sketching process of the mm -hmm. piece we'll do Perfect. today. Yeah, a little time yeah. lapse. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, Clever says Umea and es Eskilstuna. Probably yeah, Eskilstuna. Wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. It's kind of in the middle of Sweden, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Clever. It's not super far from here. Oh, I don't know if the video. I don't know if our video is playing here. Oh, okay, it is playing. Okay, yeah. perfect. <clears throat> yeah, so that's like the, the basics, like how I start. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have this one. So this is like when I just color it, like basic colors, like right. this also takes some time sometimes. So therefore I've just, you know, prepared it for this one. Yeah. So uh, this is like what it looks like when I start. So I used to just duplicate my, my layer. And I keep this one just as it is, so I can have it like a color reference. And this one I just used to multiply and I drag down the opacity. So I can have it as um, as a reference. Okay, so cool. So you kind of go in there, lay in your base colors, what you want to work with. Yeah. And then you kind of you just kind of reduce it so you just have it there. Exactly. Nice. So what I will, yeah. So what I will do now is just like block in the colors and do all the shapes. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. And we'll be working in Photoshop today solely. Are we switching to anything else or is it just all going to be done in Photoshop? Um, it's all going to be done in Photoshop. Okay, My favorite cool. program ever. Yeah. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is. Yeah, I do most things in Photoshop and it feels like I've been doing that for a pretty long time now. Yeah. But it's like you can do so much in it, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, oh. it's, it's incredible. Yeah. But I also have like a tip. And that I uh, actually, um, what do you say? Um, I got to know it, like, exp yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, I can't find just... the words, sorry. But it's no, like it's okay. this, uh, I'm not, not sure what it's in English, smoothing maybe? Or yeah, it's a smoothing. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's the smoothing. I... Or it, it could be a stabilized stabilization or smoothing, yeah. one of those. I think it's super, uh, super good, especially when you're nervous as I am today. <laughs> if you have it to do like nice a, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like if I'm doing a line, it can be kind of wobbly. Mm -hmm. So you can just turn this on and it will get much better. So yes. that's like the best thing ever if you want to do. Well, we were, lines. I, I remember talking about it with another artist of it's cool for a few things, right? One, 
yeah. like you said, if you're having a, a bad day or you're nervous, you're shaky, yeah. it really <laughs> helps. Two, it's actually really great because it kind of increases accessibility too to other people who you know, might have disabilities or any other thing else that yeah. might not allow them to have a steady hand and they still kind of want to create the art that they want to create, which exactly. is really cool. Yeah, but also, yeah I think it's awesome. Working on a, yeah, like working on a tablet too can be kind of tough because with paper or canvas, you have that friction that allows you to stabilize it a little bit better. And so yeah. I think sometimes it can kind of take a while to really learn how to do these really stable straight lines when you're when you're using a tablet yeah yeah i totally agree so what kind of brush are you using um, um right now? okay so i'm in love with the kyle's brush um okay. so i use mostly i think it's called like 4h mm -hmm. uh like a 4H i did pencil. some yeah i have two of them so this is like the one I have just tweaked a little bit myself. I'm not really sure what I did to it, but I kind of like it. Um, yeah. It's uh, I can just show you the difference. Uh, so this, if I wanted to do, because I will use this uh, brush a lot like later in, in the process. It's a bit, um, what do you say, like grainy or like... Yeah, it's got um, grainy, a little bit of that texture. Yeah. Yeah, that and is sometimes, it's really nice. Yeah, it is. And it feels like analog, I think. Mm -hmm. Like if you yeah, use a real pencil, say, a lot of your work feels like it's been done with colored pencil. Yeah, which is and I really awesome. like I, that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Because I was doing like mostly analog before, mm -hmm. uh, so um, I just went into the digital illustration when I uh, studied uh, design illustration because it saved time. Actually, that was the oh. main reason completely yeah <laughs> i would say that's a i'd say for most traditional artists you kind of just end up moving into digital if you're doing any type of uh, commercial work especially yeah um, nothing worse when you're doing something and a client's like can you change this this and this and if you're working traditionally you're like well <laughs> yeah you can, but it's gonna take a while, take a to while yeah. It all. yeah yeah because I, I i actually switched when i I uh, do it was doing my uh, finals in my bachelor degree because mm -hmm. I was doing a, a picture book and that takes some time and yes. I just had to you know figure how to speed up the the process right right yeah okay so I just want to show you because when I do like because I'm gonna fill in this uh, this shape mm -hmm. uh, and I really like this one it's a gouache bonus gritty pencil it's also a mm -hmm. kite's brush uh, and I think I really like it because it has this um, also this grainy uh, texture. Yeah. So I used to fill it in uh, like all the way. And then I will show you um, how, I, how I do to make it more like a little bit smoother. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is this is the part where I, I think some people ask like, well, why would you, you know, why do you do it by hand or isn't there a faster yeah. way? But I'm sure I think, it is. <laughs> I think sometimes it's it's enjoyable. I mean, as yeah. as an artist or, you know, especially if you're, you've done a lot of traditional, this is kind of how you <laughs> this is how you color your artwork. Yeah. You know, like there's a process. But also I think seeing the strokes in there adds to that analog feel. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of an important, important step. Yeah, because I, I really like when you have this uh, analog feeling. Um, and I also think that um, like one of my signature maybe like approaches or like style is to have these textures, like how I mm -hmm. do my strokes. Um, yeah, cause I Yeah, because I'm doing like cross hatching, like the whole picture later on when I do my mm -hmm. rendering. Uh, and that's like just how I always been drawing like on paper. So it just feels right. like natural to me. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's nice when you can find a way to bring that traditional process over to the digital and not feel like yeah. you're losing too much or maybe even sometimes enhancing it um, just because you have more tools uh, at your disposal. Yeah. But I, I remember when I first started out digitally, that was, I did everything so it looked like a silk screen because I just, I was yeah. so afraid of my work looking digital. Oh, you were? Um, I just, at the time, it just didn't, I just, I don't know. I just, I was like, 
I almost felt like I was cheating doing yeah. digital work because I was so used to doing traditional work and painting with acrylics and oils. And so it, there was a part of me that almost felt bad <laughs> doing yeah. it digitally. Like you, you don't have to, you know, mix that, your own colors. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally understand what you mean. Um, Elizabeth Mock is asking, have you ever used uh, fresco for your work? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, I have. Um, but I like, uh, I'm also like doing it in Photoshop because it's like this big screen because I have a Cintiq, um, mm -hmm. a Cintiq Pro I'm working on. Um, yeah. And it's a, it's a pretty big screen and I really like to have these like large uh, canvases. Yeah, are you working on the yeah. 24 inch or the 30? Yeah, 24. The 20, yeah, I, yeah. I have that as well. It's really nice once you kind of get that big screen because it, it kind is. of feels like you're on that canvas again or, you know, this big piece of paper. Yeah. And it also been like, you know, when I was doing uh, analog, I always wanted to have like big papers. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't like draw on this small. Yeah. <laughs> That's super well, it's space, nice because you get those big strokes too, if you want, or like, you know, you really can put your, yeah. your body movement into it. Exactly. But um, I just wanted to show you like my next step when I fill this out because it doesn't mm -hmm. look like even and or anything. So I just um, like mark everything. I think you can do it like because I'm working on a PC, but I think mm -hmm. it's like command or control. And then you just uh, click on your uh, layer. I think right. it's like that. Yeah. yeah, and it'll select it. Yeah. And then I will go to like <clears throat> uh, to increase uh, my my marking um and i will just do one pixel so it get like i don't have these um holes in it I'll have to right say. it'll expand it out yeah. yeah and then i just you know draw over nice so i still have this like grainy texture mm -hmm. which i want to have and keep so yeah that's how I do right. it. Like the, yeah, you the don't want to lose. You don't want to lose that edge. You don't want that to be super clean. Yeah. You kind of want to still be that brush, that signature brush texture. Yeah. So I'm going to to name the layer. Um, super important, especially when you have like sometimes like 500 layers. <laughs> it can be a good thing yes. to you know <laughs> keep track of them. <laughs> yeah, staying organized is an art in itself. Yeah. That yeah, is for it sure. is. It's like a trial and error you learn um, by yeah. your mistakes. And it's it's a balance. Sometimes you can over organize and it kind of slows your process down and doesn't make it as as fun or as yeah. enjoyable. That's true. I think that's like what I was so also like with um, After Effects, like it was kind mm -hmm. of intimidating. Um, yeah, like in like when you first see it. Oh, I forgot this one. I see. Well, especially with the animation, it's you really do have to keep track of your layers with the timeline, and yeah, it's it isn't as free flowing. <laughs> you have to, you know, yeah, it's, every it's little thing so can really more, have an impact. Yeah, it's so much more like technical, or yeah, I think. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the results are awesome. Yeah, they are. I would love to be like really good at. Um, after picks. I'm so impressed with like all animators. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just like how how do you do that? I don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> practice, so practice, cool. practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So is this the second still life that you're working on? Because you did the original yeah. one you did was the football one, correct? Yeah, exactly. And okay. I also have like one up in my sleeve. Uh, okay. It's a okay. it's a ballet. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's kind of a different approach. Um, so I wanted to have that one more like uh, like delicate or like romantic kind of feeling, like lighter. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for this one, I really wanted to have this. Um, you know, when you get a knockout, because I I actually been boxing before. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, nice. And and I really hurt my nose. <laughs> so I've seen all these stars in real life. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It, yeah. yeah, it hurts. Getting hit in the face yeah. is uh, not a very enjoyable experience. Yeah, it really, really hurts. Um, I, 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 think I really I got... like this idea. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll... No, no. Yeah, I was just saying that I, I was a bit too, like, 
I thought I could do it. Like, as I was really new when I wanted to go up in the ring and and do the like the real thing. And I uh -huh. think it was a bit too early, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Needed Sorry. to work on your, your footwork a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that too. And maybe, you know, my blockings and everything. Yeah. 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 So I think it was but an it's, easy it's... target. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's exciting though, you know. Like it's it's something that not a lot of people get to do, and it's it's yeah. kind of a interesting, interesting uh, exercise sport skill. Yeah. But um, it's super fun, actually. I think, especially the training. Like it's very mm -hmm. intense. Yeah, so I mean, it's definitely wanna... good for the mind and body because yeah. it's like you said, it's it's such a quick, it's a quick sport, but it's so controlled, you know. Yeah. So I'm yeah, I really, I love this idea of um, the sports still life because sports are all about motion and action. So yeah. it's it's a cool kind of paradox. Um, I, I like it because when I first read that, I was like, sports still life? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. It's, it's skeptical. all the gear. It's all, yeah, it's everything that is involved, all the items and and. So yeah, it's it's a really cool, really cool yeah. idea. Okay, so I'm just doing a clipping mask um, to keep in here. Sometimes like my computer won't um, be kind to me. So it might have to just close this one down because it starts to a little bit of lagging. Oh, now I think it's, it's fine again. Yeah, awesome. it takes a little bit of time to process. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, so now you're in the clipping mask and you're kind of yeah. doing this design on top. I don't know if I want to have the, um, the lines even like, you know, straighter or sharper maybe. I'm not really sure. Okay. Because um, if you have, if I wanna do have, have them more like straight, I, I just have like shift, um, click and shift, right. and then drag my, my line, and it would get like really straight. Right, right. But at the same time, like the boxing glove is like, it's have this roundness, so maybe it's better to just keep it, you know. Yeah, we'll see. If I stay with that one, I think so, maybe. <laughs> uh, Robert Wennerberg says, I'm happy there's not many Swedish streamers on Behance. So yeah. he's excited that you're on here. Yeah, I'm, t I'm too, but I'm like super, super nervous. <laughs> but everyone seems so nice. And I'm, I think it's so, I'm so glad that people are asking questions. Um, so, oh yeah, yeah, and it's it's like a it's really exciting. good It's exciting to see other people work and their process, um, and you know, it's everybody's here to learn, right? Everybody's yeah. really supportive. It's the Adobe Live community is really, really awesome. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, there's you can't you can't mess up. You <laughs> you're doing great. Don't don't yeah. be too nervous. I also love, you know, seeing other people's processes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's really inspiring. And you also can get these uh, little tips and tricks that you didn't oh know gosh. before. So many. Like for the smoothing uh, thing that I learned, like it was maybe a year ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a, almost a game changer. You know, I didn't have to redraw my lines all the time. <laughs> Right. And it's funny because yeah. it's these things that are right there in the toolbar or right on the menu and you just never notice them or just never use yeah. them. Yeah, I've, I've learned a lot just from hosting. Just uh, yeah, so many talented artists. And yeah, so um, it's it's definitely fun. I mean, it's a, such a big program and I think you can do like so much within the program. Oh, yeah. Um, so it feels like I just, you know, um, scratched the surface of it. Mm -hmm. 
yeah the fact that we're still to this day the the best painting program is for photography <laughs> yeah yeah that's <laughs> it's pretty, interesting. pretty amazing yeah yeah Okay, very cool. So doing, you're in the clipping mask, you're, you're blocking it out like you did the glove. Yeah. And then you and just select it all. Okay. Yeah, because now I'm going to, um, I wanted to get rid of these ones because I could stay in the clipping mask. Right. Uh, but when I'm doing my rendering later on, I think it's easier to just have them in separate layers. It depends. Right. Sometimes I just keep them in the in the clipping mask, but sometimes mm -hmm. I, I will have them in their own layers. So uh, so for this time, I want to have them like separate. So okay. I just um, I do the mask, like the mark all the the red in the glove, and I will I tighten it up for one pixel. Otherwise, the um, the purple will have this slightly. Um, what do you say? Oh, I'm I'm thinking wrong, and now I think no wait. wait. <laughs> Maybe it's like this. I just have to have to check so I don't um, say it wrong. Okay, so this was this was correct. Okay, so I okay. do the mark like I mark the the glove, the red one. Mm -hmm. um, I go to the mark and then I will uh, expand it one pixel, and I will uh, invert it, and then I will have like. Um, I will say on the on the purple layer, and I will just erase this one. Gotcha. So yeah, and then it's easier for me to you know work with this later on. Right. It seems like uh, Tilda has shown up in chat, and she says hi. Yay. She's very proud of you. Thank you, Tilda. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> got got some friends joining. Yeah, that's awesome. They're the best. Well, time is already flying by and I can't believe it. we're already about 30 minutes into the stream. No way. I know. It's kind of crazy. Crazy. Um, we are, if you guys are just joining us, everyone, if you're joining us on YouTube or Adobe Live or Behance Live, uh, we are here with Anna Pershbrake. I think yeah. I got that almost right. Yeah, um, it's perfect. Yeah, very talented uh, illustrator and designer from Sweden. And today we are working on some still life sports paintings and this one is boxing it's very cool um you can check out anna's stuff on her website i believe it's your name correct.com yeah yeah that's correct. so uh wade wade will go ahead and throw that up in chat for you guys to click on um also we are doing the artist spotlight today we will be doing one tomorrow but we're also doing one today so pretty exciting um the artist spotlight uh tab is in the upper right hand corner of the chat um if you guys want to fill that out you could nominate someone, nominate yourself, um, and who knows? You guys could be on the uh, artist spotlight. So very exciting, and we'll be doing that about ninety minutes uh, into the stream. So yeah, welcome everybody. It's great to have everybody here. We always love everybody on chat. It makes the stream go by so much faster and so much more entertaining. So um, yeah, please stick around. Yep, looks like Wade has put the website on there. So please check that out. Anna's awesome. work is really awesome. Now, are there any plans to animate any of this stuff down the line or? Um, not this one. Um, if I would have um, uh, wanted to do that, I mm -hmm. should have like do the whole glove. Uh, otherwise, because if I want to do like this moving, it will, you know, um, if I want this to move like maybe up or down here, mm -hmm. um, it will just be, I have, I have to do the whole glove. 
So, right, right. You have to do the yeah. whole the whole, the whole glove behind that layer. Yeah. So when it moves, yeah. it's not revealing this half finished exactly. glove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just like for also like saving time, I mm -hmm. I just do like I, I this will just be a still still picture. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely. So I think I'll go to maybe the helmet now. Okay. I'll just pick up some colors. And we will have to be name this one because I forgot. Purple box two and B one. Okay, so then it's time for the helmet. So you had mentioned, I think, early in the stream that you had done, uh, you were a social worker. Yeah. Right. So when, yeah. so when did you, was this during your art journey or um, was, when, when, when did that happen or when did you start uh, working professionally as an artist? Yeah. I mean, I haven't been like um, freelancing for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I started as a hairdresser. So I'm okay. a hairdresser as well. <laughs> um, but I'm, <laughs> like I'm pretty we said earlier, well-rounded. Yeah, but I'm I'm pretty short, so I had like I sort of have trouble with my with my neck and my shoulders and everything because mm -hmm. I um I wanted to do like something that was creative, um, and I was thinking about you know be um, be a graphic designer, um, mm -hmm. but I was like I was scared that if i had like my interest um as a as a job it would let just take away all the fun right. so therefore i i started as a hairdresser and then when my back like gave gave up <laughs> like um made me uh just i couldn't do the the job anymore or i couldn't see myself doing it like in within five years right. um, i started to think uh what what else should i do what is like my second interest <laughs> So mm -hmm. I'm I'm very interested in like people and like behaviors and um, you know psychology and stuff. So I figured I should be a social worker. So I um, educated myself to be a social worker and um, I started to work for about maybe half a year or something. But I got burned out pretty quick. Yeah. So I had like this uh, life price uh, or life crisis. Yeah, yeah. Um, where I just didn't know what to do, like with my life, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I was very depressed and had this anxiety and everything. So I figured that maybe I should just try and do something that I actually like enjoy, that I love, yeah. that gives me energy rather than take it away from me. Definitely. Um, so I, therefore, I um, I applied to. Um, uh, preparatorial art school i think it's called it's mm -hmm. a one year okay and i was doing more like um you know fine art and this i tried out different areas as ceramics and and paintings and all that stuff mm -hmm. uh, and then i applied to uh, the design school in Gothenburg, uh, and i studied there uh design because i wasn't sure like if i wanted to be a graphic designer or if i wanted to do the fine art or like I didn't really know and I didn't right, know at that right. point that you could be like an illustrator like you can right. actually earn money from drawing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um so I was doing um uh, this exchange uh, semester at Christie in Providence yeah no and it's an incredible incredible school yeah it was so like it's one of the best things that I've ever ever done <laughs> and the scariest yeah. as well yeah yeah I was gonna say especially for uh it has great illustration program there as well um, yeah. yeah RISD is really fantastic yeah it was like um when I got there it just I think I just developed and like so much through that half year mm -hmm. um and when I came back like when I had the one of my first um classes I was like this is what I'm going to do like this is what I'm meant to do for the rest yeah. of my life it was just like yeah. a, I, it's I a can't good even feeling. Yeah, it That's was, it was so special. Yeah. And it just like, I got that like fire going mm -hmm. inside, like, 
this is like my life. So uh, then I knew I have to be uh, an illustrator and it's like, it's what I meant to do. Um, yeah, I mean, and... it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like you had said before that you were worried about it. If it became a job, it might take away that yeah. passion and that kind of that enjoyment of making the art. Yeah. Um, but I think with some people, I, for myself as well, I don't see myself doing anything else. No, so me neither. So even though it can be difficult and stressful and sometimes definitely can take the fun out a little bit, but you, I started to realize that I, I don't know if I'd want to do anything else. Yeah. And so and I'm just like, kind of, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm, I was just saying like, I'm, I'm so grateful that I can do this and because like I have been, you know, burned out and I had a, like a, a normal job or what to say. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that what I don't want to do as well, because uh, I know if I if I can't do this, I will like I, I won't be happy. Yeah. That's just how it is. Right, right. So I'm just so grateful that I can do this and mm -hmm. that I get commissions and I'm just yeah, I'm just so so happy and I feel like I'm exactly where I want to be right now. That's awesome. And I, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It's a good, it's a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, that's why so we I just, love having you on here. <laughs> yeah. And I just like want to encourage people to, cause I, I mean, I was so scared, um, and for doing all of that. And I mean, when I was going to RISTI, I cried for like several weeks before I went oh. cause I was so, so, so scared. Um, yeah. but I like, do it even if you're scared like remember like your dream you can do it um like i i don't want anything like my fears to stop me anymore yeah so that's also why i'm here today <laughs> yeah i mean that's yeah you kind of have to confront confront those fears and yeah it, it's honestly worse to regret not doing something yeah um, absolutely and, you know because every i always say this and i know a lot of other artists it's if you, if you want to succeed you have to fail first and yeah. you have to kind of accept that failure is a part of success and it's a part of learning and absolutely. it's okay to be scared because guess what everybody is yeah <laughs> and you could be doing something for decades and still be very nervous or scared yeah. when you're working on a new project so I think it's something you kind of have to get used to, yeah. um, which can be hard for some people, you know, yeah. the anxiety or depression, or like you said, but absolutely. Um, but I think is... like, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. No, I just like, uh, sometimes I think it helps to, or for me, at least, um, I was thinking like, okay, so what's the worst thing that could happen? Like, what's the worst case scenario? Right. Um, and that could be like, okay, someone will laugh at me or I will just say something wrong or I will, um, you know, I was so scared to, you know, um, cause my, when I had my anxiety, when it was like at the worst, um, I was so mm -hmm. scared to, you know, throw up and, yeah. you know, in, and I couldn't go to a store cause I was so scared of people. Like I have this social phobia mm -hmm. and, um, I just had to, you know, okay, what's the worst thing that will happen? Uh, okay. It's, if I like throw up in the store and what will happen then and then i was like okay people will think i'm disgusting they will laugh at me okay so if they do what's the worst then yeah. and then it was like okay I, I i don't know like that's the worst thing yeah and maybe not, that isn't that, that bad. bad like right. like um probably people will help you well and i think that's the thing too is we always tend to think of the worst things that will happen but yeah there's, there's a lot of amazing people out there and there's a lot exactly. of helpful people out there and i think it's it's hard to remind ourselves of that um but i i'm glad that you were able to get into i mean people always ask like should you go to art school or you know what's the proper path and it, it's different yeah. for everybody but i do know that going to a school no matter what it is you you just meet like-minded people and you meet people yeah. that are going through the same process as you and I think that's the important experience to have, whether yeah, or not that's going to make you a better artist in the end. It's just, it's a support group, you know, it's yeah, people that absolutely. Are just maybe having those same feelings. So um, that's why this Adobe Live is so great as well, because 
people that are watching this one there's an opportunity for community and two see that people that have been doing this for a long time are professionals they're going through the same stuff and, and yeah. it's okay you know yeah and absolutely. That's, that's kind of part of the process and and you know i would say most artists and creatives are very empathetic and you know emotional and or yeah. you can kind of have all these things so that's that's, that's what makes you a great artist as well so yeah you know everybody also... out there like don't 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 worry about what's the worst thing right it's yeah think about what the best thing could be because a lot of the that's times really with hard advice. work and persistence like you could get some of those things in your life and that's that's pretty awesome yeah and um, I also read uh, a book when I had this, like, when my when I had my life crisis, mm -hmm. and it was just so like um, comforting, I think, because it just said like, "Oh, you have anxiety. Congratulations, you're a very creative person." <laughs> <laughs> it just like that you like you're using your creativity like the wrong way, because mm -hmm. um, we have like this. We could come up with the strangest things or like the we have this imagination, but we use it to like, um, it constrain, do they constrain us? Like it, just, it stops us from doing. Yeah, um, yeah, they could use, yeah, constrain. Anyone. Yeah, yeah. Or like instead kind of, of hold, like hold us back or. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, try to um, canalize it in a different way. It's a challenge, but it's, it's possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where a lot of your creative energy depends on how you apply it and where you apply it to yeah okay so i think i would just sorry um wanted to do some changes to my yeah let's do my it. piece because uh, i really like you know this um uh, kind of sharp shapes here and also mm -hmm. in the in the stars and i think because over here it's pretty um maybe too calm for a boxing image where you get these knockouts so mm -hmm. maybe I would just do um, these, let's see. Um, maybe some, um, the, maybe the shapes on the gloves could fit good on the sack as well. Mm -hmm. I think I'll try that one. Okay, so I'll just do some quick sketch maybe. Uh, yes, I see what you're saying. Kind of add, yeah. add some of that pattern, some of that work onto the yeah is that, i'm assuming that's like a punching bag exactly yeah okay. or, you know sometimes you just um come up with uh, with stuff when you go yeah i'll I'll, yeah. I'll try this yeah it's important to be able to recognize things on the fly um yeah that's usually i think a lot of doing training practicing uh you know the more you study composition color those those things become a lot more obvious um you don't have to plan them as much um yeah they kind of they kind of work themselves out as you work exactly yeah we'll see that's the best thing with you know with the digital illustration Otherwise, if mm -hmm. it doesn't work out, I can just get rid of it. It's super easy. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. I was I was horrible with color for the longest time. And Me too. when I started working digitally, I think the stress of working traditionally is oh. like you have to mix the colors, the clean yeah. up the setup, the whole process to paint and or you know, even with watercolors, yeah. gouache, whatever, it's a lot of work. And so yeah. you know, it's really frustrating. You're like, oh my gosh, these colors aren't working. Or you know, just and so it would stop me from experimenting and when i started doing digital i was just like oh i can experiment with a ton of different colors and yeah. different compositions and and that that definitely helped me a lot yeah me too because i was super scared of colors uh, before mm -hmm. and now i just love colors i think it's amazing right. how yeah, they can you, can you know it. set the mood of of your, your drawing or like mm -hmm. uh, what you want to um you know depict or like emphasize in your piece Yep. So it's a it's a powerful tool, I think. Um, Nuria says you are amazing. Oh, thanks, Nuria. 
so happy you're here. Yeah, I like this change. This is nice too, because it actually leads the eye back. Yeah. Into the composition, into the gloves. Exactly. Really nice. Because otherwise, it felt like um, for the original one, that it just wanted to, you know, disappear. Yeah. Um, so it just keeps it back round, round the illustration. Mm -hmm. And what, what size do you usually work in with some of these illustrations? And what's um, your, your, uh, do you mean like the canvas size or? Yeah. Like what's your kind of like the DPI or, you know, um, how okay. big do you usually work? Uh, I always have like no less than 300 DPI because sometimes mm -hmm. I don't know what it will be used for or, so I just want it to be, you know, sure, uh, that right. it will, you know, manage to maybe go up a bit in size. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, uh, I usually, I like doing like these square illustrations. Um, yeah, the square but I also, Yeah, but I also like doing, uh, cause I thinking about like, if you wanna do like a poster or something, like what would fit into a frame that you can buy on like Ikea or something. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, so, so using kind of these standard sizes. Yeah. That are easy to, yeah. yeah. But sometimes like when you're doing um, maybe for commissioned work or something, it can be super fun to do like these different or um, like sizes or formats. Uh, mm -hmm. And it can be really challenging. And I think I really like that. Okay, so I just do this one as well. And if you're too lazy to get your ruler up, you can just use the line over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you come up with the uh, the uh, color scheme for this one? Were, were you looking at anything? What was the inspiration? Um, so I, I often use this like red uh, purple, pink. I kind of like the mm -hmm. combination. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of my want to go and what I like um, experience through like my my way of being an illustrator. Like what do I like? What kind of colors do I like? Mm -hmm. uh, but I also can like really recommend, especially when you're maybe new to colors or want to learn more and you know, just to find the courage to use it. Uh, I think Adobe has a really good app uh, I think it's called um, Adobe like Create. No, uh -huh. oh, sorry, Capture. Uh -huh. Adobe Capture. Uh -huh. So you can, uh, like, if you're on a walk and you see, like, this really nice, I don't know, sunset or, like, this really nice flower or anything, you can take a photo and then you put it in the app and the app will pick the colors for you. So yeah, then you have, it's... like, a like a five-color scheme, kind of. Right, it's very cool. Yeah, so I think that's a, a great tool if you if you want to explore colors. And then, because I started with that one, and then I just find out like what I what I like my like personally personally like. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think that's um a really good app actually. Yeah, no, that's that's a great way, and it's a great way to learn color and kind of how color works together. Yeah. So that one? Well, like you said too, you can kind of, you can find things that you like already and then yeah. it kind of breaks it down for you. Okay. Okay. These are the main colors that are being used. Yeah. And I also, I think that sometimes like in the, uh, in the beginning when I started, I often used like too many colors. So it mm -hmm. got like this, um, um, maybe, uh, how do you say it? Like not occupied, but it was too many colors. So it just got yeah. like really i can't find the word sorry it wasn't it, it didn't come it didn't that. was yeah it wasn't focused like the yeah 
Yeah, sometimes less is more exactly. when it comes to color. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be harder to create those focal points or those first reads when you have so much going on. Yeah. Okay, so I think I have to name this one. Hmm. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure what to name this. Uh, explode, maybe. Okay, just so I understand what I'm doing. No one else has to understand my my names <laughs> of the of the layers. Yeah, as long as you get it. Yeah. So this is the one like we have in your to protect your teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super important if you want to have a your smile. Yeah, you know, if you want to save your teeth. Yeah. Enlightened Swami says, Anna, thank you for teaching illustration. This is amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm I just mean... so, yeah, I'm so happy that people are watching and, you know, communicating. It's yeah. awesome. No, people are loving it. I would love to know where, like, everyone's from. Like, where oh, yeah. are you guys? Definitely chat. You heard yeah. it first. Anna wants to know where everyone's from. Please, please put it yeah. in the chat so we know. Seems like we've got people from all over. Yeah, I think that's so, so awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, and the cool thing is too, is everything gets archived. If you, if you miss anything in the stream, you can go back and watch it. So, and also I know sometimes it's hard with uh, being in uh, different time zones. So it's, I love that it all gets documented yeah so we've got penny doodles coming in from pennsylvania in the oh. u.s cool. uh Aranza is coming from mexico wow uh, i've been Steve in mexico Festus. actually once yeah <laughs> yeah it's once beautiful country it was beautiful mm -hmm. uh St steve festus is coming in from new zealand hey steve um, so always on what's here. the time in new zealand now this would be like that's a good question. <laughs> a totally different time zone. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was really Let's big. Let's see, 5.22 a.m. A.m. That's, That's early. early. It's early there. Yeah. <laughs> Go to bed. Good morning, then. <laughs> yeah. Because here it's like in the evening. Is it in Sweden? Yeah, it's seven, seven twenty, p.m. Okay, yep. So you're about nine hours ahead of uh, yeah. Los Angeles. Because you're in the morning as well, right? Yeah, it's about ten ten twenty three in the morning here. Wow. In the, on the Pacific Coast. It's so cool because sometimes it just feels like I'm in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you it's know? unfair. <laughs> I know when New Year's comes around, you're like, well, I guess there's another yeah. country enjoying yeah. New Year's. We're just <laughs> stuck waiting. Yeah. Like when the 2000 came and everyone yeah. was like, oh, it's going to be, you know, um, nothing will work. Everything would just go black and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I still like remember. Um, I don't know how old I was. I think I was like 12. Um, mm -hmm. But I was so nervous, like if the internet would go down. Because it was like, it was so new. We just like mm -hmm. got it, kind of. Yeah. And it was, you know, so, so exciting to, you know, um, you could see like what's going out, like going on in the world. Uh huh. So. Oh, yeah. Would, but it, it would worked just be a fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Biola's coming from a Nigerian living in Brooklyn. Wow, cool. Hey, Biola. Uh, Enlightened Swami uh, is from Nepal. And wow. it's 11 o'clock there at night. At night. Wow. So we got some early risers. 
We've got yeah. some night owls. It's awesome. Everybody in between, yeah. No, it's very awesome. Well, and it's it's cool too because you know, even if you're on here and you can't speak English, you can see the art. You know, it's its own language, yeah. thankfully, which is helps connect us. That's awesome. I think that's like one of the strengths in illustration. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a very powerful tool, actually. Well, it's, you know, illustration itself, right, is yeah. everything has a, a story or a message or you're trying to portray some type of text or words. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a really communicative uh, art form. Yeah, it is. Do I have the star anywhere else there? Claudie, Print My Soul, says, working and watching in the background. Lovely work. Awesome. Thank you. What is she working on? What are you working on, Claudie? Are... Yep, let us know. Adrian says hello. Um, wondering if you use a drawing pad and if so, which one? I'm uh, assuming they're asking if it's a Cintiq or some type of tablet. And I think we yeah, uh, I about use that earlier, a right? yeah a Cintiq Pro. Uh, it's 24 inch. Um, so it's like drawing, yeah, on the screen. So. And when I started as an illustrator, I had this Wacom tablet, like the Inches, I think it's called. Like when you draw. Oh, the, yeah, the Intuos, that's just, you, you kind of do this. Yeah, you exactly. Draw, and it was here, super hard in the beginning. Yeah. 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 It just like didn't connect, you know, the brain, like that my hand is doing something down here and my eyes are going straight forward. It was so strange. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so Claudia's this... working. Uh, you had asked uh, what Claudia was working on. She's yeah. working on next week's uh, Adobe Live Illustrator challenges. Wow, so she, awesome. Yeah, so she works works with us here at Adobe. So very Love cool. Love to hear that. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I, I also used to work on the Intuos because, um, gosh, I, I started painting digitally, I think, when I was 18 or 19 and started i think with corel painter i think was the first thing i started yeah. doing it i've on. never heard of that one actually. yeah it's another yeah they i feel like they were doing a lot of the like early digital paint brushes is um, that a program or is it like a tablet it's a program it's a or? program it's corel mm -hmm. yeah um they do corel draw there's they do some technical stuff too um for like um epilogue printers like laser printers and other things okay um, cool so yeah but that back then that was kind of a, another option um and i think it was it was i think it was before photoshop really came out with some of the, like the incredible brushes they have now i mean you can find yeah. anything but i think at that time corel kind of had a lot of really cool painterly brushes but gosh comparing any of those brushes to what they have now it just seems like <laughs> it's different it's like, wow, are horrible <laughs> <laughs> they all look very yeah. digital yeah but it's like i was so happy when i um when kyle's brushes when come to um to the photoshop oh yeah, oh, yeah. it was just I feel like, like it changed it yeah. changed a lot yeah. yeah i i tried everyone like every single one out on a sheet mm -hmm. i was like oh this one this one this one yeah. and then i just you know um 
started to have my favorites and I did this little group of my my favorite uh, brushes kind of yeah so we'll use uh, a few of them later on too and I'll show you why <laughs> because yeah, I'm like yeah. super scared of the plain surfaces mm -hmm. so this is the mouth so uh enlightened swam is wondering um how many years you actually did uh do instruction for art uh is that uh, how I like mean, how many how many years did you um because i know you'd, you'd gone to RISD and yeah yeah okay so i i did my uh design um uh, bachelor so that's three years mm -hmm. and i did this one uh, one year uh, uh, preparatorial before my design education Mm -hmm. And then I went to RISTI and RISTI was during my, my bachelor's. So it was um, an okay. exchange semester. Oh, very cool. For about six months. And then after I did my bachelor, I actually uh, went to a school here in, in Stockholm to study like more graphic design, just to broaden myself. So I think okay. it's about, and that was uh, six months. Okay. It was more like a course. Yeah. So about about five years total, right? Four, four years. Yeah, total? yeah, four, five, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, five, I think. Okay. Yeah. Four and a half. <laughs> yeah. Gonna be exact. Yes. Yeah. I know it's it's really depends. I mean, like, gosh, I have some friends. I feel like they once they finish their bachelor's, then it was going into the master's program, and yeah, you know, I feel like some people have just it's still doing it's like they're working professionally and they're still still pursuing the their education of it so yeah um, yeah i'm i am currently uh taking uh character design courses you so, are yeah i'm doing this, i love um, your characters oh thank you so you're not um, the teacher you're like yeah you know it's uh, i had i have done it for a long time and kind of realized that i didn't have any formal training I had I'd gone to school for illustration and kind of yeah. taught myself character design and kind of entertainment design and kind of realized that I really wanted something formal uh, and yeah. structured. I, I work, I know a lot of people don't, but I work really well with structure. So, uh, and I tend to produce a lot faster and more of it. So yeah. it's, it's been really fun. Um, yeah, it's this guy, this instructor, awesome. Nate Rag uh, from DreamWorks um really really cool course uh doing character design for animation so lots of fun awesome i would love to do uh, more character based um like learn more about characters because i think it's mm -hmm. like really hard to do that actually it's well it holds a lot of weight you know it's yeah whatever you're designing them for it's gonna carry the story for you yeah. so they yeah it's it, it can't be kind of a can't be done halfway you really got to yeah. make sure that those characters are are going to be able to accomplish everything that you need throughout the either the film or the book yeah um, or tv so show that you're working on do you use like do you have these um stories of the characters like ready and then you go like how um how do you do it that depends right like sometimes you know if i'm working with a client you have a brief so yeah they kind of they give you all that information that you need um like who the character is where they come from mm -hmm. um kind of what their purpose is um but as far as like personal you know when i design my own characters i think some of it is you kind of have an idea some of it is you just have an idea of what kind of character you want to design you know like i yeah. want to design a you know like a, a rustic cowboy who's like you know yeah. it's his last ride you know, like, and he's going to be riding off into the sunset and like, what would he look like? He's been doing this for yeah. 35 years and, you know, that's, he's probably been kicked by a horse a few times and <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. You kind of start going through it in your head of, uh, you know, I, I think that's what I love most is like, right. Like you said, you're kind of creating your stories uh, yeah. around your characters. So. Awesome. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to do like a little more. One more tip because i i just drawn this star and because mm -hmm. i'm i just want to save time so i'm going to yeah. duplicate it and um 
throw it back here. Maybe change just the direction a bit so it doesn't feel like it's the same. Okay. Um, maybe something like that. And I also um, used to be kind of careful with the lines. Like, for instance, um, I wouldn't have it like this when it, you know, aligns with the other line because it kind of disappears. Okay. Yeah. So I don't I just, know. No, you, I sort of break the lines kind of. Feel like the uh, my my stream is frozen on my side. See if I oh. can. There we go. You're back. Okay. Oh. I I was missing that little part there. Oh, sorry. Okay. So no, I just said. Um, should I take it once again? Yeah, I don't know. It seems to be freezing on my end here. I don't no. know if that's just me or. I keep on working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can get this figured out. Yes, as Wade says, avoid tangents at all costs. Yeah. Very important design lesson. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yep, we still have audio. Okay, let's see. It looks like you're coming back in. So, am I still frozen? Yeah, we can. I can hear your audio, yeah. but I can't. The screen, your works workplace workspace is uh, seems to be freezing up here. Oh, we're getting little That's glimpses strange. here and there. Hmm. Steve says it looks fine on his end. That's good. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Well, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep doing what yeah. you're doing. Okay, so I'll just do these circles then. Perfect. So to have these perfect circles, I would just use the, uh, I'm not really sure what it's called, but this circle marking tool kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, the shape shape tool. Yeah, so if mm -hmm. I want to keep it like, um, I really want to have it like um, like a circle and not oval. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the correct word, maybe. But I um, I I press shift on the PC, mm -hmm. so then yeah. it just get like even. Yeah. Right. And I think I'll just go with. In the same layer with this one. Well, everything looks like it's working okay again. Oh, perfect. All right. This well, also we are, like... Let's see. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't important. <laughs> you oh, say. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say we're about a, a hour and ten minutes in here. Um, I think in about. 20 minutes we'll be doing the artist spotlight yeah so we'll, so yeah around 11 o'clock pacific standard time we're gonna hop over to that and spotlight an artist here if anybody would like to nominate themselves or somebody else to be in the artist spotlight go ahead and click on the tab artist spotlight in the top right of the chat and fill out the form and let us know and if you're joining us on youtube hello hello you can also join us on Behance Live on b.net slash Adobe Live. Um, we've got Wade, our wonderful moderator here, and come in the chat and ask Anna any questions you guys would like. Um, yeah, we are doing a boxing still life, which is pretty fun. Um, so this is exciting. It's going to be so we're and we're doing this day two as well tomorrow. 
yeah but it will okay. be more like because this day i'm doing mostly like blocking the colors in mm -hmm. uh and for tomorrow and maybe also like because i'm soon finished with the blocking i will stop rendering and that's like right. the part that takes most of the time for me right, right but it also makes the illustration pop and you know yeah yeah it's not you know it's 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 tough trying to fit it all in into these two you know two hour sessions yeah so i'll do my best <laughs> yeah exactly you know we always uh tell the artists that if you can't get to a finishing point it's totally fine uh, a lot of people will post the finished design afterwards after the stream so if you can great if not it's you know it's not the end of the world just watching the process is always awesome yeah So I'm not sure about the blue line here. I'll just do, because I have like this, um, when I get like unsure of my colors or my contrasts, I used to do like a layer uh, mm -hmm. and I fill it with uh, white. And then I mm -hmm. go to my blending modes and I go to like some of these ones, like I think it's maybe hue and saturation or something uh -huh. on your end, like in English. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if it desaturates, yeah. it turns it into a grayscale. Yeah. So yeah. here, um, I might be able, like maybe I'll, you know, tweak the colors a bit because it's like mm -hmm. very similar. Right. And I was like unsure of this one, this blue, because it's like really dark. Uh, right. So it should work, but it's like, it gets like really dark um, when it's on top of the red one. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if I like that because it feels like it stands out too much of the illustration. Right. Like it catches your eye a bit too much. Um, so maybe just, you know, try and change it a bit. Yeah. Just to see how it, how it turns out. And I think like even if this went like really close to the red one, Maybe a bit too close, just a little bit calmer, I think, mm -hmm. than the dark one, because I think it stands out a bit too much. Yeah, I'll try this one. And I'm really not happy with the, the line either. Oh man, all these changes we got to make. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. But I think this is better. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the process too, is you sometimes you don't know it until you kind of get to it. Yeah. And then it doesn't work how you thought it would. But I think that's kind of fun too, actually. Maybe something like that, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's nicer. Yeah. It's not as harsh. Yeah. Maybe I'm not sure about that one. Because it is pretty close to the to the yellow, the pink and the yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so sometimes this can take a while. Um, you know, with the color thing. Mm-hmm. And then it's get too close to, to this one. Or maybe I'll just have it that way for this time. We'll see. Okay, so uh, I'm like blocked all the colors. And mm -hmm. now I have to, uh, before I start the rendering part, I will just have like get these lines out. So I think I'll, let's start with the boxing gloves. And then I will do everything in, um, in our clipping mask. Okay. And I will just have it a little bit darker. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe turn this one maybe to five. Mm. 
So now you're working in a clipping mask again, correct? Yeah. Okay. So for my rendering and like, uh, I will do all in, in clipping masks. Okay. I think I'll start rendering this one actually. So yeah, I'm feel scared, free to like... jump ahead anywhere yeah. because you know, you can always kind of go, You've got the time in between the streams as well. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to add anything before we get to tomorrow, um, exactly. please feel free to do that. Because I'm, uh, I'm always scared of like these plain uh, surfaces, and as I'm mm -hmm. doing like if I'm doing something analog, I'm super scared of the white sheet, like yeah. you. Maybe some of you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I have like this little trick for myself. Um, it doesn't really, you know. Um, it isn't really visible when it's uh, when it's all done, but it's it makes me just um, you know gets it get me, gets me started on the piece. So mm -hmm. I have this um, it's a big square uh, brush, and it looks like something like this. And I have this one. It's a impasto brush, mm -hmm. and it looks like something like this oh, when you nice. just draw it. So I used to just do some textures um to you know um smudge up the surface a bit mm -hmm. so it doesn't get that scary <laughs> so then it's just easier for me to to draw on top of it later something like that maybe And then I will go back to my to my brush again, and I will have that one, and I will just do it a little bit darker one more time. So this part is kind of um, meditative, I think, for me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will just, you know, keep keep drawing my my lines. Yes, yeah, the nice nice part of it where yeah. things start to really come together. So then I used to like often I use the uh, gouache supreme brush mm -hmm. uh, when I start doing. This is a little bit bigger. Uh, and not as uh, precise as my other, like the had when I did the, the outlines. Mm -hmm. And then I would just do this, but on the whole piece, and I will, um, I will use the the other one as well when I'm doing like more, when I wanted to tighten it up a bit. Mm -hmm. So kind of this mix between like a like some type of cross hatching rendering. Yeah. It's very cool. And I've tried, you know, different brushes, like uh, cross hatching brushes to see mm -hmm. if I could save some time because this is really time consuming. Right. Um, but I haven't really found any that you know makes the result that I that I'm after, and I think it's because when I do my my strokes, it's I mean it isn't like that even, and it's have different spaces, right. and it's um, I mean it's still right. my hand doing all the stuff. Right. So, and I really like when it you know it comes alive in a in a sense that I that I really enjoy and that I like. Yeah, and it's. It kind of this is what makes it your work yeah so it's yeah it is it is tough because it takes a lot longer but um yeah it's hard sometimes for a brush to kind of simulate those personal yeah. touches i really like how delicate it is though 
because it's really yeah. not a big contrast but no just being able to see it because at first i wasn't sure either how <laughs> you were kind of getting those textures yeah and then i would just you know um because this is like i will do more here like with darker mm -hmm. colors right right but i'm like working my way down and then i will apply my lighter colors on the top to make things mm -hmm. really pop and and um you know get the volume mm -hmm. yeah i like I like that style. It's like a slow, it's a slow build, which is, you yeah. know, how you do it with colored pencils as well. There's a lot of layering. Yeah. Um, it is kind of like this slow buildup of, of material or medium to kind of get those really dark darks. Yeah. Because I used to work like in oils and, and gouache and stuff before. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm kind of used to, um, you know, working with like this um you know subtle they say subtle like S nuances. subtle yeah yeah, yeah subtle mm -hmm. um, yeah subtle nuances yeah yeah and just you know but it like build my my image mm -hmm. yeah gouache is uh one of those mediums that i don't think people realize how incredible it is uh yeah. if used right um there's something the colors you can get from gouache paint are pretty awesome yeah and i like it i mean i love how you, you can have almost this velvet um finish like they're mm -hmm. so matte do you say yes. matte? yeah but yeah matte and it's funny though because it is a very matte finish but the colors are really like luminous like it just yeah they're vibrant like it doesn't yeah. feel flat like there's just a lot of color there that's surprising yeah. that with acrylics you kind of have to add medium to it to get yeah. kind of that the, those brighter colors, but with with gouache are really nice. And I love the. Yeah. I remember mixing. It was always like make it like melted ice cream, you know. That was kind of the. Yeah, this is a really, really good tip those, actually. Yeah, I love it. And so it'd always be like as we were mixing it and trying to get it to that right, um, just that that right uh, texture was yeah melted ice cream. Yeah. So I used to, you know, um, use it as if it was like oils, but you mm -hmm. have to work like really quick and fast. Yeah, because it, it, dry, right, it fast. dries yeah. fast and it's not as it's it's kind of like watercolor or tempera paints where it's not it's not really opaque, like really. Opaque. No. So it's it's going to absorb a lot of those colors. Um, so you really you do have to do some kind of planning ahead of time for sure. with yeah. wash. Um, I for a few years I went to uh, the community college here in Pasadena PCC mm -hmm. and every year they would have an artist in residence because um, they have a great art department there because um, a lot of uh, people will go on to art center and, and some of these other Cal arts and we had um, this artist and I don't know if you've heard of him but uh, Sid Mead and he's they kind of call him like the godfather of like sci-fi like film you know he, he designed Blade Runner um, and uh, Short Circuit and some of these other, uh, a lot of films in the, the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. But he worked almost exclusively in gouache. Wow. And he did a, a gallery show at the end of his uh, residency, and it was just unreal, like what he That's could cool. paint. And, he was, and you'd see these big, beautiful strokes, and you're like, he just did that, just one. Yeah. That was just like a one stroke, and it's just like, um, you know, this is all before digital art, you know, and he's just yeah. creating these epic sci-fi landscapes and characters. But really that really, cool. yeah, that's when gouache kind of blew my mind. Yeah. And it can be like a pretty tricky medium sometimes. Oh, it's, yeah, really finicky. And, but yeah, I always say on here, it's like, it's really important to kind of get your hands on some real, real materials and do some, do some traditional stuff. You know, the digital yeah. stuff is so important and you should definitely, you know, 
learn these programs. It's going to help you so much in your journey. But you know, don't don't forget to hop off the computer once in a while and sketch in your sketchbook or do a painting outside or it all kind of yeah. helps in the end. Yeah, it feels like you um, uses your eyes almost differently or you see something like uh, it's hard to explain like when you do something analog I think yeah it's like um, it's, it's, it's like the difference between doing um, figure drawing in person or doing yeah. it from a photograph you're just gonna when you're in person it's like there's another individual in there posing for you yeah. you're in a you're in a classroom you can kind of walk around the figure and see how the the, the volumes are turning and the shape yeah. where in a photo it's just a flat you know image so you can only get so much from it absolutely and i think that because when i was at RISD, i took these um painting classes and we had we did a lot of uh this i don't know if it's in it's the same word in english but like croci like it's a person like modeling and you, you know stand in a circle around the person and you you know yeah that's i that would just be like nude figure drawing yeah 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 and like was, life, life drawing really, or exactly and i think it was so great like um that's when i started to understand like color mm -hmm. and like shadows and what color shadows like i never use black for example in my shadows mm -hmm. and so like if there is a shadow like green or is it blue purple um yeah, i think it was super helpful yeah because i it's i don't think a lot of people realize how much information is in the shadows right yeah there's so much going on there and that is that definitely painting uh doing oils that was always like the number one it's like don't use black <laughs> like, yeah. anything but black make your own black like mix whatever you can but never just use yeah. black out of a tube you know unless it's a style or something that you really want to integrate but it was always stay away from it you know yeah because you just like mix the black i think it was like with raw umbra and maybe indigo blue mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. so then you have this really really dark color but it isn't you know pitch black right there's a different richness to it yeah i like how you've been um you were turning the the saturation off as well it's good to yeah. kind of get that grayscale look um, and that helps a lot with composition um, yeah. if sometimes the colors can be too distracting for you or if you're not as like you said if starting out if you're not as good with color it's kind of good to use grayscale to help you as well mm -hmm. all right so we're about three minutes out and then um, we're gonna do the uh, artist spotlight Awesome. Just to let you know. Sounds perfect. Okay. And when you're choosing your darker colors are you just kind of going down on your slider are you just kind of yeah. using a, um kind of like a shade just darkening it just a little bit yeah i'm just okay. darkening it a bit and then okay. like for tomorrow i will just show you because i'm um because if this was like a, a traditional piece with like oils mm -hmm. i'm probably would use like maybe some green or some blue like right you have these different um pigments in some it kind of yeah cooler darker it's, shade yeah but it, when i do like digital i just do like it's kind of monochrome and then i will have yeah. some stuff that really pops and makes it feel more alive i think mm -hmm. but that's for tomorrow yeah well cliffhanger yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. stick around come back tomorrow. yeah <laughs> So 
So now I've just changed my brush to this um, smaller one. Is this for just a little bit of the tighter detail or tighter textures? Yeah. And maybe I'll just do it a little bit more darker here. Well, when you get to a stopping point, just let me know and then we can yeah. switch over to our artist spotlight. We can do it right there. <laughs> okay. Is that? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it is now 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time and we are going to be doing our artist spotlight and it's special for me because we're doing one today and tomorrow we usually do it on the second day but we are doing it on both days um and i believe our artist spotlight today is tilda martinson am i saying that yeah. name correctly yeah that's perfect and let's see do you have her page yeah i can see can i can get it up here yeah, please. And is Tilda also uh, from Sweden? Yeah, or yeah, she is. Tilda? She's yeah. in okay. uh, she's in the southern of Sweden, uh, in Malmö. Okay. Or okay. Malmö. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, please, yeah, uh, in introduce her and let us know a little bit about her work, and then we can kind of focus on some cool pieces that we like and uh, yeah, hype them up. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, she's an illustrator in Sweden. Uh, and she's doing like this, I think it's uh, like, she's doing it um, digital, but mm -hmm. I think it's a really nice touch of the analog feeling in her work. Yes. Because I yes. really love her lines. And she uses like kind of simple shapes, but still gets this like message through. And I think it's like really comes alive. Um, yeah, it's like, example. it's almost like a forced perspective kind of feel. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I really like it. Yeah, I love it. And this one, I think it's like almost like a riso print. You know, when you mm -hmm. have this um, red uh, with the green and it gets just mm -hmm. like this other color. Um, yeah, and I really like it's almost because I think she's really good with like characters and to get the, um, you know, the expressions. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will show you like when you get back. Yeah, I like all the but transparent like, layers. Like you said, it feels like a silk screen almost, or like a yeah, uh, yeah, the print. So I think it's just really, really nice, and I think it's really like all her pieces are really warm, um, mm -hmm. and and it just makes you happy. Oh, so this is Malmö, where she lives. <laughs> so oh, this okay. is like a map, yeah. And like she has oh, this, yeah, um, cool. almost like it's you know. Uh, crayon kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the, this crayon pastel kind of mm -hmm. vibe. Yeah. And you're right, they are really even uh, using a lot of cool colors. It's kind of like the warmer side of them. Yeah. And it's like, because I really, really love her characters. Mm -hmm. Like the expressions, even like for the dog and the cat. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's this, what was it? Subtle, subtle, subtle. Subtle, yeah. <laughs> yeah, subtle. subtle expressions that really makes mm -hmm. it, yeah. And I think she's <laughs> yeah. also like really good at, you know, picture books. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, uh The Three Little Pigs, I think it's in English. Oh, Are awesome. you familiar with that? It's like a... Yeah, a The Three Little Pigs, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this just... So is this is, book published? Yeah, it is. Oh, awesome. So oh it's, gosh, it's, it's really, so really nice. So it's like a new take, like, um, for the book. Mm hmm. And I really like it. Ah, it's a really cool see. style. It almost has like a cutout yeah. feel too. Like yeah. Cut out paper. So she was like doing a lot of analog work before. And I think it really shows, um, yeah. that she knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think she's just translated it so good into the digital world. And also that it's like, it isn't like black, it's brown. And it really makes it also, you know, have this soft feeling instead of if, if it was black, it would be much harsh. Right. And like these little details, the ants. And I just love this guy. 
Yeah, no, these are, these so, are really great. So nice. Yeah. And like also the that, expressions yeah, on this small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think it's delightful. And she does, looks like she does some animation, some yeah. kind of motion graphics as well, which is really cool. A cat party. They're so I kind of love that. Yeah. I know she loves cats too. <laughs> Who doesn't love cats? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's just so, they're so cute. Yeah, really nice color balance. Oh my gosh, yeah. this, this little dove. <laughs> they're so cute. And the blue and the orange together, it's just so mm -hmm. nice. And I also like, um, I just have to show you, because she's like doing ceramics as well. Oh yeah, I saw that. And I think you can really see like her style, how it translates even into uh, the ceramics. I think it's so awesome to see. Yeah, which, you know, ceramics is not the easiest yeah. medium to work in. And actually in doing this kind of stuff is, um, it could look not great pretty easily. And yeah. she really captures those same little personalities that yeah. she has in her illustrations. Yeah, I think it's amazing. really beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I love them. Beautiful website as well. Um, yeah, it's very cool. Really clean. showcases the art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really like their own characters. They mm -hmm. have their own personalities. I just love these so much. Let's see, is there anything else? Do, now, does she do, it looks like she has some package design as well. Yeah, further down. Let's see. So for this one, for example. And I think it's really good to this as well. I also get like this um, uh, analog feeling. Mm-hmm. I think she has this, um, let's see. I think this is also like really smart, like how she's doing the background with just strokes. And she has this off white um, background. Oh, I can, I can hear you, but I think you're- uh, But you can't see me. The feed's, the feed's no. freezing again. No, it has frozen. I know, I can still okay. hear your audio though. Okay, so. Um, but I think we well, should have. Well, um, I think Wade has got her Instagram. Okay, I think you're back. I know Wade has got her Instagram up there. Um, okay, yes, you're back. I think with the. Uh, cause, yeah, because I can see like the soya. Yeah, we can see it now. Because I'm yeah, awesome. Yeah, but I'm in in a different picture actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's maybe a, a bit delayed. You are ahead of it. You are further in time. Yeah, You're in the future. Yeah. I'm sorry that you have to come back to the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Tola has like the... gorgeous, gorgeous work. Um, yeah, you should totally look her up. Yes, please look her up. I believe it's her name is her website, Tilda Martinson. Yeah. And also I know like... Wade will put the links in the chat for everybody. Oh, yeah, this is... Did I you think want to say it's something showing about this? now. Yeah. The one with the lines in the background. Yes. And yes. I think it's like really smart um, how she's done that. I'll see if yeah. it. Yeah, there's a playfulness to it. There's a simplicity. And yeah. it's, this is actually really hard to do. Yeah, you know, it like is. It, it's, it's super, it's, super hard. Yeah, to really make it work and, and feel this put together. But all the yeah. little story elements are great. Yeah, like this frog. It was on the top of the yeah, uh, <laughs> the little crown, the furniture before. So it just like it happens. This small stuff in the background that you can mm -hmm. see if you look like several times. And I think it's just yeah. super smart how she's done this. Yeah, these are really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the cat and the yes. iPad. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is awesome. Very cool. This is also meant for a for a picture book. Yeah, these are these are beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, very exciting. Um, 
Tilda Martinson. Yeah. Everyone should go check her work out. Very beautiful. Absolutely. Um, I can see how you probably both really love each other's artwork, a very similar analog feel, really playful. So yeah. uh, thank you, Tilda. Very excited to see your work. And um, everyone, please go check out her stuff. All right. Well, we want to get back. We got about another uh, probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then we can yeah. uh, wrap up for day one. Awesome. So I'll just continue with the, with the rendering then. Yeah, let's do it. Is there someone watching that also do this for hatching techniques? I would be super interested to know. It's a good question. Anna's wondering if anybody else is using cross hatching, cross hatching in their work. Because I um, actually was doing. When I did the preparatorial, uh, preparatorial art school, I did uh -huh. some uh, etching, you know, this when you have these copper plates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this was like, you have to kind of do the cross hatching kind of right. technique. Like it's it's just like, you know, natural. Mm -hmm. And I think it was um, about there when I, you know, started to do it like on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of started yeah, started to see the results. Yeah. And I really liked it. And I like the process of doing it as well. Yeah, I took a, a lithography course, which was Okay. Really mind blowing because we were working yeah. on, you know, million year old limestone and isn't that kind kinds of scary of... too? It's or... crazy, yeah, because you yeah. can crack the block, and it's you're using this old, uh, old press. You know, it's all hand, yeah. hand done, and kind of all the the chemical reactions that have to go just right. And yeah, but very, um, I would say I learned a lot as well with uh, rendering because you're using a special wax pencil mm -hmm. um, to draw on this, and so you kind of it is a very slow process because you you can kind of erase but not really you know like there's <laughs> there's ways to to do it but you're uh it's that kind of slow rendering and kind of a lot of that cross hatching and building of yeah. values but can you like reuse the stone when you're uh have you used it or how does it work because i've yeah, never done you sand it stuff. you've okay. like you sand it down so you kind of sand away the image and then you redo it. It's so, like a lot of work then. Oh my gosh, it's so much work. And you know, yeah. the, so this, the limestone doesn't last forever, right? Because you're constantly yeah. sanding it down. But yeah, it's pretty incredible. I <laughs> I was like, I can never work this way. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> but uh, you know, the prints you get are, um, the textures are uh, unique to that process because mm -hmm there's all these tiny little mountains and valleys. And so it creates yeah. this uh, kind of this perfect little texture uh, on your prints that are really beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, I love that was a pretty cool one. So this is kind of fun because you're, is this something where it's like, as you're doing it, you kind of get to a stopping place with, with each rendering. Like it's, does it feel like it's something you kind of like, you're kind of slowly molding it and shaping it into where yeah, you want it to of. be? Yeah. 
it is and then it's like the hard thing will be when i'm going to the second one this one to mm -hmm. get it kind of similar <laughs> right but right. um i figure it out yeah it's like you try to kind of match that process yeah it just but like, yeah it is tough when you're using different size brushes and you're, you're kind of you're doing yeah. little steps yeah but sometimes it's just like you need to trust your eye kind of and your gut mm -hmm. i think yeah and just do it and it doesn't have to be super perfect mm -hmm. um but almost <laughs> doesn't have to be perfect nothing's yeah, perfect no. yeah i know even though we all want it to be yeah but you know that feeling and you never get mm -hmm. you know satisfied and you can just do it forever kind of oh yeah because it can't always, get perfect yeah yeah always by the time i'm done with anything i'm working on i'm like ready to throw it in the trash can <laughs> yeah oh i would like, like right, how, how is your process looking like when you begin like in the beginning are you like oh this it will be awesome and then it will be like this look like crap and then it would be like oh no this is really good actually like how does the process look like for you <laughs> yeah oh no there's a bunch of back and forth um yeah. i think i'm also i'm not as confident with my colors and so the blocking in process can be kind of tough for me because I'm trying to imagine, I do so much rendering that uh, I always try to kind of imagine what it's going to be like. Okay, these are these are base colors. Like a lot of this is going to change, or you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a lot of up and downs. Like, you know, the emotional roller coaster of a painting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in this. You think, you, you right think now. you're you're holding on tight and you're going to make it to the end, but you're like, wait, did I? Did, is that really the right <laughs> choice, or yeah. is it really going to look good in the end? so it's it's just a terrible feeling but i think it's kind of happens to most of us yeah it's I'm, you would think um doing it over and over again you would trust yourself to be able to recreate it but there's always that yeah sneaking doubt of like can i do this again <laughs> yeah it is and i'm like in that spot right now where i feel like I won't be able to do this. <laughs> like this look like this doesn't look good. But it's um I would just have it have it that way and well, maybe come back to it later. The in between time is my favorite time when I'm when I'm a guest on here is it allows me to kind of collect my thoughts, do a little bit of catch up work. If I don't think I'm gonna have enough for the the next stream, I can kind of mm -hmm. figure a little more stuff out off camera. Um, and that way too, you can do that and then you know tomorrow at day two you could just recap it with us yeah. so you know work as much as you want on this get get as far as you want to feel comfortable with day two um mm -hmm. it's not a not an issue but that's that's, awesome. that's kind of when i like to make myself feel a little more at ease because day one can be stressful and you're not sure how far you're gonna get so. yeah but it looks great so far i mean wow, i, I love you. it Oops. And is the is the background going to stay white, or is there any texture to the background, or how? Um, how is that? No, I think I will have it uh, just white, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I will bring some textures uh, on top of the finished artwork later on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it will gotcha. make it even more um, analog, I think. Yeah. And more no, interesting. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been doing that a lot more lately. Um, and I did yeah, it for I think... a while and I started to realize, I was like, what do I love about all these other, you know, concept works and characters? Yeah. I was like, oh, there, there, there's a, layers on top that are mm -hmm. creating that, that texture, that feel, that paper. So definitely been doing that a lot more. Yeah. I think that's a great way to uh, also like understand your own work is by, you know, looking at others and like, mm -hmm. You know try to figure out like how what what do i like about this piece or um and as you said like oh they use this kind of textures and then mm -hmm. you can go oh, okay so how can i do mine or like how could i apply that kind of like thinking on my own work right right uh you know to get inspired oh yeah i mean um it's something i try to do i try to do it it's, it's like i don't want to do it too much right it's like with reference i don't want to get yeah. so much 
that it's influencing everything I do, but yeah. uh, it is good before you start, or maybe if you get stuck to kind of re remind yourself what you like, what you're aiming for, um, get yeah. inspired by other people's work. I, I think it's important. And for me, it was also like um, this color thing, because I was doing really like desaturated pieces before. Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, when I looked into like art books or, you know, other illustrators, uh, I had to, you know, start to think about like, what, why do I like this piece? And I just mm -hmm. uh, realized that everyone is using a lot of colors and bright colors. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I should try to do more color. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I really enjoyed it. And it was like, um, but it was kind of scary to do that. But it's, yeah. it was really helpful, I think. Yeah. Well, it is now 1120 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I think in the next few minutes, we can wrap up here. So if you get to a, a stopping point, Anna, um, mm -hmm. Becca Smith says, uh, side note, love Anna's haircut. Oh, so there you go. You. It's not just the artwork they're loving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I think it's called like a shag, shag yeah. haircut. Yeah. I'm going to, we believe you. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Robert Winterberg also wanted to add that uh, he was talking about a brush earlier. Um, it's called Maddie, uh, or maybe Maddie is the artist. It's her Environment One brush, and it's a line texture. So maybe we can get okay. that later. Or Robert, I would can, love uh, to know more about that. Put a one. link to that or something. Yeah, yeah. Because it's always cool uh, looking, seeing new new texture brushes. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Robert. Well, I think in the next minute here, we'll mm -hmm. wrap up. Yeah, sure. So if you want to just uh, kind of go through what we did today and kind of what our day one was, and then yeah. we could talk a little bit about what day two uh, will entail. Absolutely. So today I've been doing this, um, starting on this uh, sports illustration with a boxing theme. Um, I started like uh, with my sketch that looked like this. Um, just mm -hmm. you know, doing a kind of a rough sketch and just placing some colors out, and then I just blocking in the colors uh, in different layers. And now I've started rendering, like doing my cross hatching or hatch crossing. I'm not sure. Yeah, cross hatching. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Um, in like uh, different values, and I'll do some some lighter on top. Um, and, you know, make it pop even more. Yeah. Awesome. And then, so day, day two is going to be a lot of the rendering and kind of really going yeah. into all these yeah, it shapes. Is. Yeah. Okay. And like for, um, and in the end, I would think I would do like this, uh, finishing touches that I really think makes the artwork pop and, you know, bring some textures and just so you can see the difference if you bring textures or not textures. So, well. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, this is a great, great day one. I mean, how are you feeling? Wasn't too bad, right? Uh, no, but I'm just super sweaty. I, I, I know. <laughs> so uh, like I said, th thankfully, they, you know, the camera is uh, above our armpits. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and everyone well, being just so, so kind. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's always awesome having everybody on here and chat. Everybody there, you, you've all been amazing. Um, this was day one with Anna Pershbrocki right from sweden yeah. uh amazing designer painter illustrator uh Anna and i will be back tomorrow at 9 30 a.m pacific standard time for part two uh join us as she draws a boxing still life using photoshop uh also tune into our new creative boot camp with andrew Hockrattle. uh he shows you how to use indesign for beginners learn how to create publications that stand out using the basic tools also, following the boot camp, join Fergie for a mobile app design live stream at noon Pacific. So please, everybody, come back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to join Anna and I for day two of the Boxing Still Life. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It was wonderful having you on, Anna. And we'll see Thank you all you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. Thank you. Bye.